if you're an editor or you work with editors who cut at least once a week and you're frustrated because you haven't really seen much improvement in the edits over the last three months, then this episode is going to help you break out of that plateau. So keep on listening. Hello and welcome to another episode of the video editing podcast from Unsplice with me, your host, Shine. Unsplice is the company that helps video editors and video teams consistently create stories that engage. Hello. And thank you for joining me. Now, if you are listening to this on your podcast app, Thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to watch it on video, head over to YouTube, or if you'd like to comment about anything that we talk about on this episode, head over to YouTube and leave a comment there. And if you subscribe, you'll find out whenever we're going live as well, because infrequently we go live and then you can join in the conversation as it's happening. So thank you very much for joining me again. This episode is something that is about a subject that's very, very close to my heart because uh, it is about the inherent advice that we are all given. Um, all video editors are given this advice to just practice. If you want to get better at editing, practice. So um, if this is you and what I said earlier rings, uh, rings true with you, that you're an editor or you work with video editors um, who are cutting at least once a week, but... There, but you're frustrated because the edits are not getting much better over the last three months. Well, that's pretty much because you are stuck in this perpetual practice loop, um, which makes complete sense because this is what we are all told. If you look in every single corner of the internet, everywhere, you're just told if you want to get better at video editing, You've just got to practice. And it makes no sense whatsoever because if you were to, all right, let's 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 think about this situation here and think about this, this piece of advice. If you were to practice boxing in your backyard and you trained every single day, let's imagine that you've got, in one year from now, you've got a, a boxing match coming up So you need to prepare for this match. You've got one year and all the time you need. So every single day you are out in your backyard with a punch bag and you are out there on your own giving hours and hours of dedication to practicing boxing. One year later, boxing match day, they put you in the ring and you're against a professional wrestler, semi-professional boxer, not wrestler, semi-professional boxer. This person has been training for the same amount of time. However, this person has been training not in their backyard, but has been training at a boxing gym. So is surrounded by other boxers, has coaches on hand, has kit available to help them. So not only are they punching the punching with a training with a punching bag, but they're also training with other boxers. They're able to practice things that you in your backyard were not able to practice. So how do you think you are going to fare against your opponent, who's been practicing the exact same amount of time as you, but has all these different mentors, uh, trainers, and coaches, and kit available to them. Well, there's absolutely no way that you are going to be able to beat them. You've been practicing one or a handful of moves in your backyard time and time again. You've written them into your muscle memory. You can execute them 
immediately. But how does that fare when someone is coming at you? You've been practicing with a punching bag. So how are you going to have the reflexes and know and be able to anticipate and have the muscle memory to be able to react to the punch coming your way? Well, there's no way because you've been practicing on your own in the backyard. All it takes is one move from your opponent, which you have never seen before, and all of a sudden, you get knocked out. So, if you are doing this, if you are practicing on your own, then clearly that is not going to put you in the best position when it comes to working in real life situations. So in this boxing situation, it's very obvious. The result is you're gonna get knocked out. In the professional environment, you're not gonna get knocked out, thankfully, um, but it will have other different dire consequences and your opponent will, your peers, who have been practicing not on their own will have a much better advantage than you. So clearly it is not about the amount of time you spend practicing. If that were clear, then you could spend a lifetime of practicing those punches with a punch bag in your backyard. Even if you spent your entire life practicing punching a punch bag, and you had one professional boxing match lined up in 15, 20, 25 years, well, you wanna be in your fittest prime, right? However, your opponent has all of these amenities available to them. You are never going to beat that, your opponent. So clearly, the amount of time that you spend practicing is not, actually going to help you in this situation. And that is what I mean by the perpetual practice loop. Because if you were just practicing on your own in your backyard, you have no, you are just practicing only what you know. And you have no guidance, no input, nothing, no lessons, no teaching, nobody to help you through and teach you the best ways of doing things. So you can think about it like this. And now if you're watching the video, there is a, um, a screen, a graphic up on screen, which is showing the perpetual practice loop. So you are in uh, this, you, this is the perpetual practice loop here. You're just practicing and practicing and practicing the same thing. So if you're practicing in your backyard, you're just gonna be practicing the same knowledge that you know again and again and again. What you need is an input. So you practice that, get good enough, and practice that, get good enough, another input. Practice that, get good enough, another input. And an input, could be anything from a lesson, a course. It could be watching one of your favorite editors create something, learn how they did it. Just watching a stream of someone editing. There are so many ways that you can pick up extra skills. And that is your input. So here we are, you want to practice, find an input and then practice that until you're good enough and then find another input, that's another skill, whether that is from any, whatever source that is from, input is essentially a skill that you're trying to learn and then you practice it until you've learned it. So that kind of explains the perpetual practice loop that is really easy to get trapped in. And by following this 
this advice that is just bandied around our industry like it's gospel, we will end up just falling into bad habits, practicing only what we know without any input from coaches, from trainers, from people who have already gone through all of this and who've hit, have received those punches and been hit in the face enough times to know what to do when this happens, how the opponent is going to come in, what they're going to do, and you can be prepared for that. So practicing a skill, the input is essentially going to dictate the quality of your skill. So let me explain that a little bit, a little bit more. So as you are practicing these skills, remember to only practice one input. And that is why this practice, perpetual practice loop is so powerful because all, you, all you're doing is practicing one skill, one input, find it and nail it, then carry on because you don't want to overwhelm yourself. And the quality of that input really will dictate the kind of skill you pick up. So if, for example, you only rely on YouTube as your source, your input source, then YouTube teaches, most of the videos on YouTube will teach you the style of editing for YouTube. So if you want to be a YouTube creator, then that is exactly the source that you want the input source that you want in order to become a good YouTube editor. However, if you're more interested in, in cutting commercials or if your team cuts commercials or short form content or branded content or even documentaries, then you are not going to find those skills on YouTube because the input source does not relate to the skill that you need to, that the editor needs to add to their arsenal. So you have to be incredibly careful about the choice of input source into your perpetual practice loop. So really you are limited by the quality of your input. And that is something that is not spoken enough about that will have drastic effects on the on your skill level as an editor and on the output of the videos that are being created the input equals the output quite simply so at this point you have two options you can continue circling the perpetual practice loop and by doing so you will find yourself frustrated with the lack of uh, improvement in the editing as you go forward as you progress you'll find that the editing is plateaued there will be uh, there will need to be creative direction given from a client in order for you, in order for the editors to come up with creative ideas. And so um, that is one of the flaws of the perpetual practice loop. That's one option. Alternatively, um, you can add a quality input to your process and focus on improving one skill at a time. Find a good source, a good input source. Now, whether that is by watching the kind of videos that you would like to work on and dissecting those videos or finding lessons, teaching courses that really, really speak to the skills that you are trying to work on and 
work on each of those skills until they are just good enough. Because as you stack all of these skills, you will gradually get each skill to perfection. So we only want to practice each skill until it's good enough, until it's in your muscle memory, until you have been practicing your boxing moves so much that they are in your muscle memory. You may not be super fast and an opponent may be faster than you, but once it's in your muscle memory, you're able to recall it and know that if you put it into a sequence or if you stack your skills into an edit timeline, they will all stack up to create a killer blow in the end. And so that is how you stack up these skills. And so find a quality input that really speaks to you and the skill that you are trying to foster in your, um, in your creative storytelling practice and practice one and move on and keep doing this. You'll notice that as these skills stack, there is this curve, you know, a, an increasing curve that goes up and how, uh, that is the skill level the, of how engaging these edits are that are being created. As each skill is, lear is learned, it compounds on top of the other. And so the engagement level of the, the edits that are coming out essentially grow exponentially in this curve, um, non-linear curve. So that is the power of practicing just one skill at a time until it's just good enough by having it only good enough and not great or perfect, you are avoiding overwhelm because that is one of the hardest parts about editing when you are starting from a beginner and you're trying to become an expert. It can just seem like a vast amount of knowledge that is needed uh, to, to reach that goal. So break it down into one step at a time and practice one skill at a time. Now, if you're unsure on what you think you should be practicing next as an editor, or if you work with a team um, and you're wondering how you can get your editor to improve, um, reach out to me and I will help you personally understand what steps you should be taking next. You can just email me shiny at unsplice.com and just reach out. Just say hi. If Even if you just want to say hi, you can say just hi and nothing else. And um, I will respond. It is me. And we can talk a little bit about where you are at and the steps that are necessary to take and what skills are worth working on next so that you can become an expert creative storyteller in the most logical steps and the shortest time possible. Now, of course, it's not an overnight thing. We will need to work on these skills. And depending on the speed of your learning, as you build on each skill, um, that will dictate how long it takes to achieve that goal. But just knowing and having that uncertain certainty taken away from you is a huge relief. And so if I can help you do that, then just reach out and email me shiny at unsplice.com and either let me know your situation, where you're at, where your team is at, um, and we can help build a plan to get you out of that. Or if you just want to say hi, just say hi. It's me on the other end. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Let me know if you share the same opinion about the advice of just practice. Um, and let me know if you're plateaued as well. I'd love to speak to you. And I really look forward to um, speaking with you next week on the podcast. So thank you very much for listening. And I will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>